Welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. Today, we'll drill our shifting technique and left hand finger action in short, quick, whole and half step patterns. Let's play the three note progressive scale by the amazing Jeff Bradetich, the Regents Professor of Double Bass at the University of North Texas School of Music. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Three note progressive scales are two minutes long, control is high at five, velocity is four, power and endurance are three, mindfulness is two, and coordination and expression are one. We practice these for the exercise and conditioning of a fast, accurate, and powerful left hand finger motion, and for the exercise and mastery of precise tuning using a trichord, which is a fancy word for a three note scale. These are a bedrock exercise in my technical repertoire. I've been doing them since around 1989, and I've kept them in my rotation to keep me in touch with the feel of micro shifts across the whole fingerboard. I always feel better after playing these, but if you're learning these for the first time, just know that there is a learning curve. It's small, but it does need your attention before you move on. Here's the pattern. <laughs> It's a progressive A major scale, going up and down three notes at a time. I start on the first note, play it twice, then I go to the second note in the scale, play, and then the third, and so on. It's a pretty simple concept, but it doesn't fall naturally in our hands. So we need a fingering rule that lets us play it smoothly across the whole fingerboard. And that rule is the shift on the second note, both going up and coming down. It's awkward at first, so that's why I included the primer in the books, but once you've got it, it's actually very logical. There's only one difference between the primer and the full exercise. The full exercise slurs all three notes, but the primer breaks the slurs on the shift. This bow change links the right and left arm, so it's actually easier to internalize where the shift happens. <laughs> If you're just learning this, I recommend playing the primer once a day for a week. It doesn't have to go fast. Take your time and repeat the motions correctly. You'll be playing this for the rest of your life. So spending one week to learn it is actually a worthwhile investment. Once you're familiar with the pattern, you're ready for the slurs. There are two things I want to highlight before we play. The first is the tuning of the second note. There's another exercise in the books called finger replacements. The goal of that is to master each note on the fingerboard with every finger. Here's a B. Remember that we play pitches, not fingerings. The fingerings are just a means to an end. We need to play in tune. In our three note patterns here, when we move up, the middle note is played with a different finger than coming down but it's the same pitch. So if you're not careful, that note could have two different tunings and no one wants that. If I play the progressive scale but isolate the middle note, I'm really doing the same thing as finger replacements. See how the middle note needs to be the same going up as coming down? That's how this exercise is fantastic at locking in exactly how you hear and play inner notes in moving lines. Also, when you shift in the slurs, you want your shifts to be accurate, but also very quick. To build velocity, 
release the weight of the finger slightly during the shift. That reduces tension and resistance. The quicker you go, you'll find your hand shapes start to lock into place. And this exercise really trains and rewards a good hand shape with no drifting or flyaway fingers. Once your hand takes shape, your intonation will improve in leaps and bounds. The second highlight is how we handle the left arm transition between the lower octave and the upper octave. Playing on the neck is easy, and playing in the upper octave is easy, but managing the break around the neck block takes some work. In the lower octave, we play the top notes with the fourth finger. In the upper octave, we play with the third finger because the angle of the arm throws the fourth finger off to the side. At some point, we have to change from fourth to third, and there are a few options and schools of thought on this. One of Jeff Bradetich's signature fingerings is third finger on F sharp right there. You'll see him and his students using that all the time, and it's great. It's practical because in that position, the distance from E to F sharp is about the same as it is on a cello, where they use third finger, so it makes sense. Most people use that system when they play the three note progressive scale. The opposite school of thought, which trains the fourth finger here, is represented by an Italian bassist named Isaiah Ballet. He lived from 1874 to 1961 and left us with a beautiful bass method in seven volumes. He used his fourth finger all the way up to A and B in thumb position. That's not used much today, but I've actually found some pretty strong applications of fourth finger up high. So don't ignore it when you're looking for solutions. So there's no one right way to do this, but it is important for you to choose exactly where you're going to make the switch and stick to it for at least three months. After the pattern is solidly in your muscle memory, then start playing around with options. They'll make more sense that way. So here's how we do it. I'll play all three versions so you can choose which one is best for you. I shift on the second note of each pattern. I'll release the weight of the shifting finger slightly during the shift. I'll focus my listening on the tuning of the ascending middle note with the descending middle note in each pattern, and I'll lead the shifts with my elbow in the lower octave. Before I play, I plan my recovery strategy because once I start, I don't let any mistake or fatigue stop me, just like in live performance. I'll keep my fingers close to the strings and work to avoid flyaway fingers. Like all of the other exercises, if I lose my rhythm or miss a shift, I'll slow down until I find my place and then continue. Ready? Here's the lower octave. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Now the upper octave. Ready? One, two, ready, go. <laughs> All right, and now the whole fingerboard. Ready, one, two, ready, go. <laughs>
And that is the three note progressive scale, so good for velocity, tuning, and finger action. For more exercises like this, and for more insight into the virtuosic technical and musical mind of Jeff Bradetich, go buy his really wonderful book, Double Bass, The Ultimate Challenge, at his website, bradetichfoundation.org. The link is in the description. This exercise is highly customizable especially in the upper octave. The fingerings in the second octave are flexible. Some of you have different fingering systems near the end of the fingerboard, so use what you're comfortable with. At some point in the upper octave, you really don't have to shift. Those of you with large octopus hands will be able to play the upper octave three note patterns pretty much with no shift. And drilling your whole step, half step patterns up here is also an incredibly useful drill. I do recommend keeping the fingerings in the lower octave as written, though. Do what's best for you, work it every week, and enjoy your new superpower. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find the three-note progressive scale as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present this in the way that I've used and benefited from it. It's not the only way to practice or approach finger action and quick shifts. Adapt these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, playing, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in the series in short, stolen moments, or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you and be well friends.